Greer you when you the yeah, I, I heard, and um, I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, the GM says that about you, and um, you know, I, I, I plan on living up to that. I hope that I can, you know, keep that uh, identity with myself uh, throughout my career in. Uh, which part of that Which part of uh, what? That he described you. The, the way he described me? Wait, I, I, wait, are we on the same page of which? How he described me, I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like as an offensive lineman, you got to do both. I mean, and where I come from at Utah, the defense is, you know, kind of the identity. You know, everybody knows Utah football for their defensive line and, and uh, you know, how physical the defensive line is. And, and when my O-line coach, Jim Harding, came in there, you know, he wanted to change that. And, you know, he wanted the O-line to be, to be like that. And he wanted us to... To have that kind of play that, you know, just not play patty cake and, you know, do our assignments, be assignment sound and, and be okay with it. He wanted us to play whistle to whistle, sideline to sideline and finish our blocks. And, you know, being, you know, being tough and uh, playing physical, that was kind of our trademark that we established this last year. And I hope to continue that. He said, don't be fooled by the tears that you saw when you got Oh, yeah, don't. <laughs> I'm a, I mean, you guys saw when I walked in. I mean, I'm, I'm a really happy guy. I'm, I'm very excited to be here. Love being here, and uh, very cheerful guy. But I mean, like I said, don't get it, don't get it twisted. When it's time to put the helmet on and strap it up and, and go, um, that's not me anymore. So now, if we win, maybe I mean, you know, win a Super Bowl or something crazy like that. I don't know. Then I'd probably cry. Maybe. Uh, Isaac, the the, uh, the face painting is that uh, is that I've been doing that since. Uh, Shoot, Little League, man. That's like the, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it started out as just like, just kind of like my deal. And, and I liked, I, I loved it. And then, you know, just trans, I mean, that's kind of just my trademark thing. There's no real like reason behind it. I did, you know, just a, a, a line across uh, my face because well, my high school mascot was a Don. It's kind of like a Zorro and he wears like that mask. And I mean, that was really the only inspiration behind that. And then, you know, I kind of just did more traditional war paint and uh, some other stuff around my eyes. But, I mean, the fans like it, and I like it. It's kind of a, an identity thing. You going to keep it up? Uh, probably. Uh, that's, I feel like when now, uh, you know, I'm a rookie, those are the kind of things you got to earn. You know, I can't just show up and, and expect to be, you know, expect everything to just come to me. Those are, those are things going to earn. I mean, they put me in 68. I plan on earning that jersey number, you know, just because they give me something doesn't mean I'm just going to take it without earning it. So, Some folks thought you would be drafted a round or two higher. What have you learned or what do you suspect is the reason that maybe you ended up going a little lower? Um, I mean, to me, I wish I would have went in third. I mean, all it really is is just to get you in the door. Um, third, you know, first, seventh, I don't, I don't really care. I was happy to be here was what was important to me because – I came here on my 30 visit and I, and I fell in love with this place. I fell in love with the coaching staff, Coach Gase and, and our old line coach and the players. And, um, you know, I knew that if I was going to go there in the first round or the seventh round or undrafted, that this is where I wanted to be. What was it about them? That uh, for me, so when I went to University of Utah and I took a trip out there when I was in high school, you know, what was appealing to me was the kind of guys and, and the atmosphere of, of family. And I know that football, you know, it's – it's huge now that guys are kind of it's for them you know not necessarily about themselves but you know it's a job you got to provide for your family and, and it kind of takes from the aspect of the team and I'm not saying that guys take away from the team but you know guys who generally care about each other guys who um, you know they're willing to go through a wall for each other that's not everywhere I, I guess you know and when I came here I felt the same way I did when I went to Utah in high school and I felt you know that com that camaraderie that that brotherhood that the, the you know, you could just tell that everybody in the building, you know, loved their job. They love coming here because they care about each other. They want to be successful. They want to win games. And, you know, that's that's a really attractive trait to have. So I, I, I fell in love with that and the culture that they're they're trying to build here. Coach Gase is trying to build here, and I'm looking forward to being a part of that. What's your first impression of Coach Gase? He's, he's awesome, man. I mean, he's not your traditional head coach. You know, traditional head coach is kind of a stern – Hard dude, and I'm not saying that that's not Coach Gase, but he's a he's a he's a guy like you could relate to him. He's really open. He has, um, you know, he's real. He's a really approachable guy. It's kind of intimidating, you know, 
uh, for players. And I feel like players know that when you walk past a head coach or, or somebody in the hallway, it's kind of intimidating. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to do one thing wrong or you, you know, don't want him to think a certain way about you. But, you know, I just passed him on the way in here and, and he just, you know, hey, I mean, he, like I said, he's an approachable guy. I love him as a head coach. I'm excited to be working for him. Um, other, other rookies, no. I mean, I, I reached out to some of them. I knew Vincent Taylor. We trained together uh, in, at Exos in San Diego. And, um, you know, I kind of reached out to some of the other guys, Isaiah Ford and uh, Charles and them, and kind of start, you know, as, as rookies to be build that, uh, that bond, I guess. What were your conversations with them been like, or what have you picked up from some of those guys just in your first few years? Um, just that they're ready to work, man. I mean, the drafts over the you know all these combine workouts and uh, these evals and stuff like that are they're, they're all behind these, behind them and I can tell that they're ready to work I'm ready to work and we're excited to get after it this year. Coach K said he kind of told the rookies it doesn't matter where you were drafted it doesn't matter that you're a rookie um, if you're better than some ten year veteran you're going to start um, how will that impact your approach to maybe competing for you know to start? Um, I think it's a great you know it's a great. Uh, mentality to have here and um, in a program you know the, a lot of the coaches talked about it last night that he's he said that but he really means that you know they gave some examples um, throughout this rookie orientation about how you know how he really means that because some guys will say it and they don't mean it and I think it's awesome it just brings up the elevation of competition and competition brings out the best and the best you're going to play. Um, like I said, at Utah, we, we ran a spread offense. We did a lot of – we relied heavily on inside zone and, and gap schemes. We also ran a little bit of outside zone. Um, not that much this last year, I guess. But, you know, in years past, I've, I mean, I've had, I want to say, like three or four different offensive coordinators. A lot of them were zone-based schemed. And, um, you know, so I've had some experience in the past. Now I know that i got to learn um, – some new things that they want and what they're expecting from me, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge of that. Isaac, you were, uh, went away for two years on a mission. Yeah. Church. What did you, did you learn anything more about yourself when you were doing that, and why did you do that? Um, well, what I learned about myself was <clears throat> that I was a, a punk kid who, who thought he had everything figured out when he was 19 years old. And, you know, I got a nice reality check. I grew up and, um, you know, that, the mission for me was to go and serve the Lord, but most importantly, people. I mean, it's not really for me to just go out there and say, hey, I'm a missionary. This is about me. It's about serving others. It's about spreading the gospel. And that's what it was for me, was to go out and mature and um, develop and become a better person, you know. Yeah, I got, I mean, I got to go to work. Um, you know, I, Steve Young is probably like the, the biggest example. I mean, Steve Young's LDS is the uh, same as me. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but he talked to you know, a person in our church and they said it's okay. So, I mean, I'm going to play football on Sundays and I'm okay with it. My wife's okay with it. Uh, my mom's okay with it. So I think I'm, I'm in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> what, what part of your experience told you that you were, quote, unquote, a punk kid? A punk? Oh, well, you know, I came in. Um, I approached my freshman year of college of the v wrong way. I rubbed a lot of the veteran guys the wrong way, and I thought I was something special. Um, you know, I thought I was coming into, you know, start, I guess. And, you know, I, I knew I had a lot of things to learn, and um, it was kind of a time for me to step back away from you know, everything that was going on in my life and to look at the bigger picture of life and about caring about other people. and and helping out other people. So that was that was nice for me to, you know, kind of just take a selfless uh, perspective on life. Isaac, I think a couple more. Against, against that backdrop, how did you feel signing your contract and how would you have felt signing it maybe four or five years ago? Did, uh, are you, did that I mean, I, I've, I've grown, yeah, yeah, it did, it did. I, I believe that the mission for me was something that was a real humbling experience. And like I said, it, it helped me get out of my element, step back and kind of look at, you know, things that I might have been, you know, wrong about and um, cared too much about myself. It's, it's more about caring about other people because life's about relationships, how you treat people and um, being a good person. That's that's what I believe in. And, um, you know, now signing my contract, I was, I was excited. I mean, it's a nice um, 
exciting thing in life. But, you know, now that that's done with and like I said, the combine and, and all that stuff is done with, I'm excited to look to the future and, and go to work. Is, would it be fair to say or kind of say that maybe before you would have signed that contract and felt it was about you, but now you feel it's about everybody who helped make you you? Or? Yeah, I mean, back back then, like I said, 19-year-old kid who thinks that he's, you know, figured figured out life, think he thinks he knows more than he actually does. And, you know, now, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty old, not old, but I'm, you know, 25 this fall. And, um, you know, being married and, and kind of experiencing life um, with and without my wife. And, you know, this is bigger picture. I mean, I'm the one who's going to be playing football, but this is for my wife. This is for my kids. This is for my grandkids and, you know, the legacy that I can leave behind.